Welcome to another of Sales Performance International's series of video briefs. I'm Tim Sullivan, a director at SPI, and I'm pleased to present this brief on how to find nuggets of gold in current accounts. I hope you find it interesting. Many sales professionals often ask us, where do I find more leads? They want to know how they can expand their pipeline of sales opportunities so they can improve their chances of reaching or exceeding their goals. We've discovered, however, that few salespeople do a good job of tapping into their most lucrative source of new business, their current customers. In this short video brief, we'll show you an effective way to analyze your customer accounts so you can find those hidden opportunities. First, let's explore a fundamental question. Where do sales opportunities come from? Organizations are constantly bombarded with forces that demand change, internal and external drivers that require businesses to adapt to changing conditions. The gaps between the status quo or current state and the state needed to adapt to changing conditions cause pain, critical business issues, or potential missed opportunities. To address pains, organizations must first figure out the best way to solve them. There may be many different ways to address each pain. To select the best approach, the organization must develop a clear vision of a potential solution, one that provides the highest value to the organization. This visioning process can consume quite a bit of time and resources before a clear vision emerges. Once a clear vision of a solution is identified and agreed upon, the organization can then focus energies on finding the best way to fulfill that vision. Many sales professionals believe that sales opportunities emerge only after the customer has established a clear vision of a solution and is looking for the best way to fulfill it. This is indeed a legitimate source of sales opportunities, but it is not the only one. The most successful salespeople recognize that if they can help customers to recognize their pains and also assist them with their visioning process, they can not only create new sales opportunities, but also do so in a way that favors the seller's capability. So there are a couple of ways that sales opportunities can be found. A customer could respond to a pain by creating their own vision of a solution and then start an initiative or project to fulfill that vision. Or a seller could help the customer to realize the value of solving a previously unrecognized pain and then help them to create a vision of a solution for that pain, a vision influenced by the seller's own capabilities. In other words, salespeople can either react to initiatives created by the customer and hope that they have an offering that fits, or they can help the customer to create an initiative with a vision influenced by their offering. In either case, the seller is trying to bridge the gap between the buyer's vision of a solution and the capabilities of the seller's offering. When serving a customer account, most salespeople spend their time working with people that they know on needs that they have defined. But salespeople that rely solely on the current presence in the account are vulnerable they are missing an opportunity to create a defensible fortress of value and interdependence with that customer. Top performing sellers also push for deeper penetration by finding undefined needs that they can address, or by meeting new people in the account that may have similar needs that they can also help to solve. To develop business and account, top sellers perform a white space analysis. It's a simple exercise that can increase the number and value of opportunities in your pipeline by two to seven times, and in some cases by even more. Let's see how to find the white space accounts. First, list your account's business units down one side of a piece of paper or a spreadsheet. This often is not as easy as it sounds. Your account may be organized by function, product, geography, or some combination. Think about how your account makes decisions, especially for the kinds of offerings that you provide, and then list their business units or divisions according to their decision-making policies. Next, think about the principal pains that each of those business units are experiencing. If you don't need, uh, don't know these rather, 
That's all right. Make a note to investigate and find out. Or better still, conduct some research on the account and make a reasonable guess about the pains that are relevant to each unit, and then verify those pains with conversations with key players in the account. You may then verify those pains with conversations with key players in the account. You may already be aware of some uh, initiatives that are currently underway to address pains in the accounts, so list them too. Next, think about your own offerings and capabilities and list them across the top of your worksheet. Sometimes this is not as easy as it first sounds. If you offer a wide range of products and services, you will want to organize them into logical groupings here. The intersection of the business units in your account against your offerings creates a matrix. Now we can determine for each business unit which of our offerings help them to fulfill their current initiatives or to address their pains. If you've already sold and delivered a solution, you can mark that as saturated. Or if a current opportunity is now in play, you can indicate that. Or if you can't sell a solution, either because you don't have one to offer or because a competitor is already entrenched there, or for some other reason, you can block that off. You may also want to consider their products, services, and capabilities too, and mark your matrix accordingly. We've blocked out quite a few of the intersections between business units in the account and the offerings and capabilities we can provide in this example. But note how many white spaces are left. Each of these represents a potential sales opportunity each one addition to our pipeline. By reviewing the white spaces, you should be able to find several potential new opportunities. Perhaps you can help to fulfill a customer initiative with some capabilities you had not previously considered. Or perhaps you can help the customer to address pains which they have not yet to begun a formal project to solve. In fact, you may be able to suggest some new high value initiatives to the customer and thereby help to create new sales opportunities, ones that you can influence with your offerings capabilities to create a buying vision that favors you. As I said before, the white space exercise, while fairly easy to perform, can provide some insightful information about how you can add value in your account and how you can create new opportunities to better serve your customer. We find that the number of opportunities in an account at least doubles or more after a seller conducts a white space exercise. In fact, you may find more opportunities in your account than you can reasonably manage. How should you prioritize these opportunities in an account so that you have a chance of winning? The best sales opportunities are not only those that produce high value for you, which means more revenues and profits especially, but also those that provide high value to the customer. A simple but effective way to find these opportunities is to use a simple matrix that segments your opportunities by value to you and value to the customer. Opportunities that solve the customer's high priority pains and which also produce high return to the seller are the ones that you should be pursuing first and the most vigorously. But there may be other opportunities that provide high value to the customer but less return to the seller. Invest in these only if you have sufficient selling resources to cover them and consider them an investment in future goodwill. As for opportunities that could provide a high value to you, but which are low priority for the customer, avoid them as they can bog down valuable sales resources in, well, the proverbial quicksand. And of course, low value opportunities with little business impact for the customer should be qualified out quickly as they are just busy work and time consuming. I hope you found this video of value. If you're interested in learning more about effective account prospecting, planning, and management practices, or about other sales performance issues, visit our website at www.solutionselling.com. And be sure to check out the Solution Selling blog by clicking on that icon. I'll post more ideas and advice on this topic there, and we welcome your comments and questions. Thank you. Good luck and good selling.